mercy and voice of the one true God. Behold the Metatron, herald of the Almighty and voice of the one true God. Behold the Metatron, herald of the Almighty and voice of the one true God. <coughs> Can. Who the fuck are you? What the fuck are you doing in my room? I'm the one that soaked it. She's the one that's surly and has to rich. Stop it. Fucking Christ. Get the fuck out of here. Now! Or you do what exactly? Hit me with that fish. And just sit down on the bed and shut up. Jesus wept. Look at my suit. Look, just take whatever you want, but don't kill or rape me. Don't oh, give over, will you? I couldn't rape you if I wanted to. Angels are ill-equipped. See? I'm as anatomically impaired as a kendo. Now make yourself useful and give me that towel, will you? Honestly, you bottom feeders and your arrogance, you think everybody's just trying to get in your knickers. What are you? I'm pissed off is what I am. Do you go around drenching everybody that comes into your room with flame retardant chemicals? No wonder you're single. No. Stand back. As I was saying, prior to your firefighting episode, It's not worth knowing, is it? I am a seraphim. The highest choir of angels. You do know what an angel is, don't you? Metatron acts as the voice of God. Any documented occasion when some yahoo claims that God has spoken to them, they're speaking to me. Or they're talking to themselves. Why doesn't God speak for himself? Glad you decided to join the conversation. To answer that, human beings have neither the oral nor the psychological capacity to withstand the awesome power of God's true voice. Were you to hear it, your mind would cave in and your heart would explode within your chest. We went through five atoms before we figured that one out. Oh. How do I know you're an angel? Well, you mean aside from the fiery entrance and the expansive wingspan, you want more proof? Fine. How about tequila? Where the hell are we? Any place you can go for a good tequila. Dos tequilas, por favor, and an empty glass. Si. Gracias, senor. We're in Mexico? Actually, we're in the franchise Mexican family eatery down the street from your apartment, but it's impressive nonetheless. You don't mind that I lost the wings, do you? I'm trying to keep our profile low. What do you want with me? I'm to charge you with a holy crusade. For the record, I work in an abortion clinic. Noah was a drunk, look what he accomplished. And no one's asking you to build an ark. All you gotta do is go to New Jersey and visit a small church on a very important day. Oh, gracias. New Jersey. That doesn't sound like much of a crusade. Aside from the fine print, that's it. And what's the fine print? Stop a couple of angels from entering and thus negating all existed. Wait, wait, wait. Repeat that. Stop a couple of angels from entering and thus negating all existence. I hate it when people need it spelled out for them. You might want to clarify that. Back in the old days, God was vengeful and hot-tempered and his wrath was bore by the angel of death, named Loki. When Sodom and Gomorrah was destroyed, that was Loki. When the waters wiped out everything with the exception of Noah and his menagerie, that was Loki, and he was good at what he did. But one day, he refused to bear God's wrath any longer. Why? He listened to his friend, a Grigori by the name of Bartleby. Grigori? One of the choirs of angels, they're called Watchers. 
guess what they do. So one day, Loki's wiping out all the firstborn of Egypt. Ah, the tenth plague. Tell a person that you're the Metatron and they stare at you blankly. Mention something out of a Charlton Heston movie and suddenly everybody's a theology scholar. May I continue uninterrupted? Once he's done with the firstborn, Loki takes his friend Bartleby out for a post-slaughter drink. And over many rounds, they get into this discussion about whether or not murder in the name of God is okay. And in the end, Bartleby convinces Loki to quit his position and take one which doesn't involve slaughter. So, very inebriated, Loki tells God he quits, throws down his fiery sword and gives him the finger, which ruins it for the rest of us because from that day forward, God decreed that angels could no longer imbibe alcohol, hence all the spitting. So, for their insolence, God decreed that neither Loki nor Bartleby would ever be allowed back into paradise. Were they sent to hell? Worse. Wisconsin, for the entire span of human history. And when the world ends, they'll have to sit outside the gates for all eternity. And this has what to do with me? Someone has clued them in to a loophole in Catholic dogma that would allow them to re-enter heaven. So what? They beat the system. Good for them. It's not that simple. If they get in, they will have reversed God's decree. Now, listen closely, because this bit's very important. Existence, in all its form and splendor, functions solely on one principle. God is infallible. To prove him wrong would undo reality and everything that is. Up would become down, black would become white. Existence would become nothingness, in essence. If they're allowed to enter that church, they'll unmake the world. If this is so major, why are you talking to me? Why doesn't God do something about it? He could, but he'd rather see you take care of this one personally. Why me? Because of who you are. And who am I? The girl in the PJs. Don't ask so many questions. Just serve your purpose. I'm going to have to pass. I beg your pardon? When some quiet little infection destroyed my uterus, where was God? When my husband decided he couldn't be with a wife who couldn't bear his children, where was God? To hell with him. Don't allow eons of history and life to get blinked out of being just because you've got a grudge against your creator. So you lost the ability to make life. You're being offered the chance to play mother to the world by acting like one and protecting it, saving it. But I can't make you. However, if you should decide to stop being selfish and accept your responsibility, you won't be alone. You'll have support. What? More angels? Prophets. In a manner of speaking. Uh, two of them. The one who speaks, and he will, at great length, whether you want him to or not, will make mention of himself as a prophet. The other one... Well, he's a quiet type. Look, I've got to go. Just try and remember, we're working in a time frame here. Hey. What's he like? God. Lonely, but funny. He's got a great sense of humour. Take sex, for example. There's nothing funnier than the ridiculous faces you people make mid-coitus. Sex is a joke in heaven. The way I understand it, it's mostly a joke down here, too. I'll see ya. Anyone who isn't dead or from another plane of existence would do well to cover their ears right about now. What the
It never ends. <laughs>